Okay, so let's now take a look at um, assembling the lower part of the character. Because one thing you will notice is that uh, right now, if I move my control over here, I can move my torso just fine, but uh, there's no movement on the legs whatsoever. They're still detached from the movement on the character. So let's rig this part so we can have a functional lower torso system. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take this control and rename it because right now it's called uh, control hips, but it's not really moving the hips. It's just moving the lower torso area. And I'm actually also going to change it because um, this control is going to be mostly useful when we want to rotate the torso. Um, but for moving it, we're going to use something a little bit different. So I'm going to start by renaming this to control C. Um, let's call him um, lower torso uh, curve. Okay, because this guy, when you rotate it, you get the, and actually move it, you get this nice curve going on on the torso. So let's begin by creating um, our control to move the hips of the character. So I'm going to create a locator and let's uh, bring it into the spine controls group and let's rename it to control C um, hips. This is going to be our actual hips control and we're going to match it over to the hips joint. So let's drag and drop it over there. Let's gonna change. Let's change the uh, appearance. I'm gonna make it into a plane on the y-axis, and let's make him smaller, something like that. That's that's good enough. Okay. And let's zero everything out. And we're going to go into setup mode, take the hips joint, and uh, shift select our control. And with compensation on, let's just add a dynamic parent to the hips joint, and we're done. So now, whenever I move this guy, you can see the legs moving with it. <clears throat> And I can actually rotate it, and uh, everything is working perfectly. So, so far, so good. Um, let's now try to connect the uh, torso to this guy. Okay? And <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change uh, the appearance of this object, mainly because it's going to be intended for rotations, which is what we've been using it the most. We actually wired this so that their torso would ro rotate correctly. Uh, so let's reflect that on the appearance of the control. So I'm going to replace this with a sphere. Let's make him like so. I'm going to get rid of the offset so that it actually is at the point of its center and it becomes more intuitive to use and I'm going to also change its color to match a little bit better the uh, the rest of the controls on the torso so that's okay so what we need now is controls that will move the torso and the legs of the character together because right now we have one for the torso and we have another one for the hips and legs but we want something that will do both and we're going to uh, use two controls two different controls for this purpose and the reason is um, we want to have two different behaviors if you look closely what's going on when I move this guy is that the um, upper control over here is not moving so this gives us this very nice 
little curve happening, which is great. But uh, we can also have a situation where we would like to move everything and have the torso move as a single unit and just have the arms stay behind. In this case, because they're using IK right now. So we're going to create two controls that do actually all this. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to start by uh, creating a locator, bring it over to the spine controls group, and let's match it to our friend over here. And uh, let's change its display. And this one, we're going to make it into a box. Something more or less of this size. Narrower, and let's bring it down maybe here. Okay. And let's call him control center uh, torso and hips okay there you go and let's go into setup mode and I'm going to take our hips control and make it part of its hierarchy. So right now if I take this object and move it around the hips come along for the ride. Okay. Now I can take this guy who's moving uh, the lower torso and I can also bring it into the hierarchy. Okay. But as you can see, well, it's not really moving the torso. So why is that? Um, the reason is the torso is being uh, deformed by the curve it has. And this curve is attached to a few uh, deformers, which are driven by these guys. So these guys are not inheriting the uh, transforms that um, are coming from this control. Okay. So we're going to solve that in a second. I'm just going to go and um, create another locator and bring it into the group. And I'm going to also match him to this location over here. And we're going to call him uh, control center. And this guy is going to be um, torso and hips, actually lower torso. Okay. And for now, I'm just going to shape him as uh, another box, let's say. And we're going to make this guy slightly smaller. Okay. All right. So let's see how we are going to uh, handle these guys moving around. So the first thing we're going to do is um, let's go to our schematic for the spine and find the objects that we're dealing with here, which are over here. Okay. So we have our, our lower torso curve object over here. And then we have uh, the hips control and stuff like that. This is the, the way it's wired right now. So I'm going to bring in the two um, locators that we've created. Okay. Let's put them over here and see how we're going to... Um, wire all this. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to have the hips um, well move 
but based on the movement of both locators, because right now only one is moving the hips, the other one is not. So let's bring in the hips, the hips. Uh, locator we don't need the matrix compose node okay so I want to be able to move these guys around uh, move the hips based on, on both locators so what I can do is right now one of them is already moving it which is this one the other is not I can just wire its position over to the position on the hips and that will probably do it but I don't want to wire directly to the uh, hips position channel because I want to retain the ability to move it independently in case I want to uh, somehow uh, detach the legs a little bit from the torso for squash and stretch purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another position channel to the uh, to the hips. Okay, so there we have it, and let's rename this channel to position. Uh, Let's call it um, torso inherit, for example. And I'm just going to drag and drop those channels onto the, uh, the schematic view. And I can actually take these guys, which uh, seem to be this ones over here, and remove them from the node so I don't become confused. This is the one I want to deal with. Just make sure of that. Select them here. And yeah. So now I'm just going to take this object over here. Let's make sure everything is zeroed out properly. Yes, it is. And let's wire its position channel. And see what happens. So if I grab this guy and move it, it moves the legs. And if I grab this guy and move it, it also moves the legs. So we've got that done. Now, I could have done this by also uh, unparenting the hips control from this object. And then all I have to do is also have the position affect this channel too. And you would do that by taking each component of the position vector and using a math at multiple node you can add the two x channels of each one of these objects and output it onto the x channel of the hips control but since we already have a hierarchy i'm just going to leave it at that uh, of course if it ever comes to be a problem i know how to fix it so we've got the legs sorted out now let's take a look at the torso so moving this guy it's not moving the torso and moving this guy isn't moving it either. So let's see what we need to do to get the torso to move. And remember, we're trying to move the torso in two different ways, one with the top control and one without it. So what I'm going to do is take the um, this control, uh, the rig spine start, and this is the start of the eighth FK spine. So as you can see, it moves the entire spine with it. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use him. Okay. We just need to zero those values out so that we don't have problems. And uh, we're going to drive it using the, uh, the torso and hips control. So let's just do it in setup mode to make sure nothing funky happens. We're going to wire this guy's position to the uh, spine start position. Ooh, we have something funky going on here. It means that our, we have some values in setup mode that don't match. Um, oh, this is what's happening. Uh, this guy jumped up over there. Let's see why. So, yeah, he was not, he's zeroed out in uh, in the scene, but not in setup mode. So let's zero that out. 
Okay. Now we should be good. Perfect. Okay. So if we take the torso and hips control, move it. The torso is moving with it. Okay. Let's try rotating it. Uh-huh. Well, this guy right now only rotates the uh, the hips. So it's not rotating the uh, upper torso. We can look at that later to see if it's going to be necessary. Let's just uh, continue working. And we're going to check that out later. So now we need this guy to uh, move the upper torso, but without this object. So the... Um, the object that will do that is um, this one over here, the hips control. Right now its position is wired to the lower torso curve object, which is this one right here. As you can see, it is doing it. So what we're going to do is um, just wire to this lower torso curve object. And let's see if that uh, does it for us. So we're going to use the lower torso and hips control and let's make sure this guy zeroed out yes it is okay and let's see what happens it works so as you can see our torso torso setup is is working we can move the tor the lower torso and the legs without disturbing the uh, the upper torso and uh, we can move the entire thing and we always have our torso rotation control available to us to further tweak how the torso is going to behave so that's it that's all we needed to do to get this part done now let's move this around a little bit all that's left is uh, to check that things are working for the rest of the character and to color code these guys so we know that uh, they are now controls uh, so let's do that. Let's grab these two guys and let's see. We're going to take the one that is called lower torso and hips, which is this one right here. And since this guy behaves in a very similar fashion to the one over here, we're going to make him the same color. So uh, it's going to be like purple-ish. There you go. A little bit dark, but... And let's make this guy a different color. Let's make him... Uh, yeah, that will do. <laughs> and finally, our hips. Let's make them uh, like so, something like that. There you go. So we're moving along. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's take a look. What happens if we move our master? Oh, what's going on there? It looks like we forgot to turn off the inheritance on the up vector curve. So let's fix that right away. This curve right here. Uh, you remember that we turned off the inheritance for the curve on the spine because otherwise you get double transforms which is what we're seeing with this curve so if I go to its channels you will notice that the inheritances are turned on so we need them off but um, before doing so we need uh, a reference locator because as soon as I turn them off this guy's going to move and we need an easy way to snap it back into position so I'm just going to create a temp locator over here and I'm going to drag and drop it over to the curve so it 
takes its center position. That's great. Now we can take the curve, uh, turn off the inheritances, and uh, wherever it went, I'm just going to drag and drop the curve over to our reference locator, and it comes back into position. And now I can get rid of the locator I created. And let's try that again. Perfect. Okay. So we've got this part sorted out. Um, we're going to figure out the rotations later. So uh, one thing that you will notice too is that if I move uh, the entire character, well, the uh, FK arms are not following yet, so we need to uh, sort that out and um, finish, finish the rigging of the character so we can move on to other things. So let's keep going. Okay, let's take care of attaching our clavicles over to the torso. And this is going to be uh, super straightforward. So all we want to do is get the FK clavicles, which are not following the torso right now, to follow it along. So we're going to do the following. Let's find where our clavicle controls are here. They're part of the uh, spine controls uh, group. But as you can see, the clavicle control itself has no uh, channel modifiers or constraints or anything that allows it to uh, follow the torso. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a couple of locators that we're going to use as constraints for the clavicle to follow the torso. So let's create our first locator. And uh, let's bring it into the spine controls group and match it to the left clavicle. And we're going to call this guy CNS L uh, clavicle. So it's a constraint. And let's make him smaller. Something like that. And let's duplicate him. And we're going to match the duplicate against the other clavicle. And just rename it to the right side. Okay. So that's all we have to do, basically. Uh, now we have to go into setup mode. And we're going to take each clavicle control and just parent it to its corresponding uh, constraint object. So this is the right clavicle, goes under the uh, constraint, left clavicle under the left constraint. So this is what you get. And because they're matched, there should be no changes in transforms. Everything should still be zeroed out. Actually, the clavicles, well, right now they have uh, these weird values because they're compensating for the new parenting and the offsets these guys have against the spine controls um, group. So we can always zero everything out for each clavicle control. And that's done. Now all we have to do is back in setup mode, take the constraint object, and we're going to dynamically parent it onto uh, this joint on the spine of the character, which is the one where everything else branches out from for the arms. So just select both and say at parent. And then we do the same for the other constraint object at parent and we're done. So right now if you just take any object that affects the torso you should see the clavicles follow along accordingly. Okay. So 
So this takes care of um, our torso assembling for the character. And now we can continue to move on to other things. So yeah, let's keep going.